Okay, hello family. We are back with some more Biology of Kundalini by Jana Dixon. We are talking about healthy hormonal foundations. We're on page 155. If you want to follow along, grab the book or go to lulu.com where you can follow along for free. We've been just plowing through here. Right now we're at about a once a week check-in. So we're just going to go through some herbs and vitamins, minerals in this chapter, some amino acids, uh, before we talk about nitric oxide, which is one of the key factors in promoting the maximum peak of kundalini and spiritual experience. That will be in the next video, likely. Um, so let's start with here. Page 155, she starts out, the present model I work with is that kundalini fire itself is more tied into the sex hormones than any other biochemical factor. Thus, it is the pituitary gland that directs the course, intensity, and duration of the kundalini awakening. Histamine, nitric oxide, eucanosinoids, thyroxin, adrenaline, and the various neurotransmitters, opioids, and peptide levels are secondary to and under the jurisdiction of the sex hormones themselves. So they are the main thing. Even though I say it is the sex hormones more than any other biochemical factor that drives Kundalini, I have also have to add the sex hormones are the origins and the end, the alpha and the omega of metabolism, meaning that sex hormones are a resultant factor of the organism total in relationship to the cosmos total. And she says AQAL. A healthy hormone profile would entail the harmonization of the vibrational manifestation of one's total life sphere in the body, mind, spirit, emotions, relationships, and soul vocation with the overall energies of the cosmos. So this whole healthy hormone profile is going to encompass all of these areas of self, body, mind, spirit, emotions, relationships, soul vocation, along with how you are connected to the cosmos. That's exactly how I work with you. If you're working with me, we're not just looking at physical, we're not just looking at emotional or mental or spiritual or hormones only or relationships only. It's how this all ties together in the overall picture. And that's not an easy thing to do in one session. So generally I like to work with people longer term. So if that's an interest you have and you need a healthy hormone profile, then definitely um, it's good to invest in yourself to get there. And yoga and kundalini yoga especially is really great for this. If the foundation of kundalini awakenings and life in general is sex and growth hormones, then it stands to reason that to both fuel an awakening and to prevent its premature end and burnout, we do need to strengthen our hormonal system. So now we're gonna get into some of the foods for that hormonal system. L-arginine is listed number one, a non-essential amino acid commonly found in the diet is an oxidative precursor of nitric oxide. Okay, nitric oxide, like I said, we'll, we'll get into more soon. Arginine is a safer and cheaper way to support nitric oxide production than Viagra, okay? Like Viagra, the amino acid arginine increases blood flow to genital area, potentially increasing sex organ sensation, enhancing the pleasure of sex. The concentration of L-arginine can be limiting factor to both our nitric oxide metabolism and the production of human growth hormone. So how much L-arginine we have. Arginine plays an important role in cell division, the healing of wounds, removing ammonia from the body, immune function, the release of hormones. According to beyondcenturyonline.com, L-orthanine is about twice as effective at releasing growth hormone as L-arginine. So sometimes you can find those together. Arginine synthesis mainly occurs via the intestinal renal axis, wherein epithelial cells, epithelial cells of the small intestines, which produce citrulline, primarily from glutamine and glutamate, collaborate with the proximal tubule cells of the kidneys. They're working together. These extract seruline cer from the circulation and convert it to arginine, which is returned to the circulation. 
Consequently, an impairment of small bowel or renal function can reduce endogenous arginine synthesis, thereby increasing dietary requirements. So a lot of people do have problems with the gut. So lower gut issues, Crohn's, um, IBS, um, just digestive functions that are not going well in general, uh, colitis, these sorts of things, they can inhibit the absorption breakdown of L-arginine. So we need to work on the gut health first. She says, warning, until we are informed differently by science, I suggest strongly that arginine, orthonine, histidine, and possibly glutamine supplementation be avoided during a peak kundalini experience to reduce nitric oxide toxicity and prevent excessive histamine metabolism. However, supplementation of these amino acids may be very important during the exhaustion phase and after. Also, because of its ability to increase human growth hormone, people with any kind of cancer or herpes infections, cold sores, chickenpox, shingles, or a history of herpes should not take L-arginine supplementations and avoid food sources with arginine, including chocolate, sorry, beer, grain cereals, meat, seeds, nuts, and beans. So that does seem to um, aggravate. Choline, it is the neurotransmitter acetylcholine that carries the sexual message in the cholinergic nerve transmission of sexual response. Acetylcholine also seems to control sexual behavior through its activity in the brain. Increased acetylcholine levels and sexual activity goes up, granted the availability of partners, that is. Acetylcholine is involved in the buildup toward orgasm and the urethral and vaginal contractions that occur during orgasm, as well as orgasm intensity and duration. Acetylcholine is also the primary chemical the body uses to transmit signals from nerves to skeletal muscles. So this chemical is needed for muscular control and proper muscular tone and will enhance energy and stamina. Supplemental choline is taken along with vitamin B5 for the manufacture of more acetylcholine in the body. All right, so let's just back up a moment because some of you are like, what was that bit about chocolate, beer, grains, meat, seeds, nuts, beans? Okay, she's saying because of the ability to increase human growth hormone, people with any kind of history of cancer or herpes or a history of herpes, should not take L-arginine supplements, okay? This is increasing human growth hormone and avoid the food sources with arginine, okay? So arginine is um, the precursor to nitric oxide. So that means you could have more nitric oxide in the body if you're making more. Um, of course, it's being transformed in the gut she hasn't really broken down why the herpes virus is a problem for that, except for maybe the breakdown. And we're going to see maybe in the nitric oxide section a little bit more about that. But let's move on to vitamin B5. Okay, B5 panothenic acid enhances endurance through helping to create acetylcholine from choline and its role in the energy producing Krebs cycle, which is vital for all living cells. Okay, then she lists black cohosh or Simisifuga racemosa acts as a hypothalamic and pituitary at the hypothalamic and pituitary level, resulting in decreased luteinizing hormone or LH. And luteinizing hormone in women promotes estrogen and progesterone secretion, maintains ovarian tissues. And in men, the luteinizing hormone stimulates Leydig cells in the testes to secrete testosterone. So with aging, these luteinizing levels normally rise in both men and women as hypothalamic estrogen receptors become less sensitive to feedback. Um, black cohosh suppresses the luteinizing hormone to more youthful levels, perhaps by improving estrogen progesterone receptor sensitivity and black cohosh targets serotonin receptors, which are used to regulate body temperature. So it also might be useful during peak kundalini states. Okay, uh, during the heat time. Okay, now we have katuba bark. K 
K uh, C A T U A B A bark, which is Anemopigma mirandum. It's considered a central nervous system stimulant with aphrodisiac properties. This bark is commonly used for sexual impotency, agitation, nervousness, nerve pain, weakness, poor memory, forgetfulness, general exhaustion, fatigue, insomnia, related to hypertension, agitation, poor memory, hypochondria, pain related to the central nervous system like sciatica. Uh, Katuba has a dopamine-mediated antidepressant-like effect. In Brazil, it's regarded as an aphrodisiac with proven efficiency in addition to treating impotence and enhancing male sexual performance by increasing brain sensitivity to dopamine, making sex more pleasurable, as well as by vasodilation. So erectile strength is increased, and it also has antiseptic antiviral properties which may prevent HIV. So, Katuba bark. There you go. And now she lists chaste berry, which is also known as Vitex. Uh, Agnes Castus helps restore youthful gonantropin levels um, of the gonad hormones in both sexes, acting at the hypothalamic level to increase se secretion of luteinizing hormone, decreasing FSH. Did we talk about that? also causing a relative increase in progesterone and relative decrease in estrogen. Okay, so chase berry is often found in formulas for women going through menopause and, and the like. Um, now we she's listing chrysin, C-H-R-Y-S-I-N, extracted from Passiflora corulia, a member of the passion flower family. Uh, this particular food herb inhibits production of enzyme aromatase which prevents conversion of testosterone to estrogen chrysin possesses potent anti-inflammation able to suppress liposaccharide induced cox2 protein and has antioxidation properties chrysin is able to stimulate nitric oxide release from the endothelial cells leading to vascular CGMP accumulation and subsequent endolithium dependent vascular relaxation. Yeah, a lot of that is more than I can process at the moment. So if any of that stood out for you, you can do a little more research on that. Syndium seeds, C-N-I-D-I-U-M, syndium seeds are used in classical traditional Chinese medicine as an antibacterial, antifungal, astringent for anti-aging, skin problems, blood and chi circulation, headaches, natural libido booster. Syndium has shown some activity against arthritis, asthma, osteoporosis, may be useful in kundalini to keep energy moving through blocked or stagnant areas and pain elimination. Then we have the herb forskolin, forskolin, coleus forskoli, activates the enzyme adenylate cyclase is incorporated in all cellular membranes which in turn increase cyclic adenosine monophosphate so that's the, the c amp in cells cyclic amp is essential to synthesize and regulate thyroid hormones growth hormones cortisol dhea testosterone melatonin and other hormones so by increasing the C-AMP levels, there's relaxation in the arteries and smooth muscles, lowering blood pressure, enhanced insulin secretion, which can help drive carbohydrates and proteins into muscle cells for energy and recovery. So this forskolin is also increasing thyroid hormone function, uh, raising metabolism rate and significantly increasing fat burning. I've seen this in a lot of formulas this forskolin, which um, this can also help with fat loss and stimulate digestive enzymes. So there's a lot of good uh, purposes for this particular herb. And then that could be good for diabetics as well or anyone struggling with that. Today's beverage of choice, yerba mate. I usually like to brew my own. This one's got some added cane sugar, but sometimes you're on the go, right? Okay, so we're going to read just a couple more. She's got listed ginseng, which is an adaptogen. Adaptogens help you adapt to stress, which definitely is in effect when you're having a kundalini awakening. Your body's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Your sympathetic, parasympathetic are 
kind of going through spas spasms, right? Uh, we need to adapt, we need to regulate the hormones. So as an adaptogen, ginseng's use in treating sexual dysfunction may be through direct improvement of the central nervous system and gonadal tissue, and through significantly altering the activity of hypothalamic cat catecholamines involved in sexual behavior and hormone secretion. There is an increasing evidence for a role of nitric oxide in ginseng's ability to facilitate erection by directly inducing the vasodilation and relaxation of the penile corpus cavernosum. Um, increased levels of prolactin cause impotence. Studies show ginseng treatment decreased prolactin secretion and suggest a direct nitric oxide effect of ginseng on the pituitary. So ginseng always been a good adaptogen. And then horny goat weed, which is Herba epimide, a well-known herb used for centuries to treat impotence, uh, reinforce seminal emissions, strengthen tendons, bones, limbs, relieve rheumatic conditions, and for diabetes and Parkinson's, um, the arakin in horny goat weed performs in a similar way to Viagra and has been long employed to restore the sexual fire, boost erectile function, allay fatigue, and alleviate menopausal discomfort. So it's found in a lot of formulas also. Huang Qi is a, an astragalus in the astragalus family and it reinforces qi and strengthens superficial resistance, also helping to accelerate new tissue growth. So this is a great one also. And then tribulus terrestris, often found in male formulas for working out, leads an increased production of luteinizing hormone levels by 72%. So it can increase that. Um, and freeze testosterone levels by 41% increases those too. So when luteinizing hormone levels are increased, natural production of testosterone is also increased. Um, Protodiocine is a component of tribulus that converts to DHEA, thereby improving desire, enhancing erection, um, has aphrodisiac effects due to its increased in the release of nitric oxide from the endothelium and nitrogeric nerve endings. Okay, tribulus may be the best resensitizer of the hypothalamo-pituitary gonadal axis in both men and women, reducing requirements for hormone replacement therapy, so um, as well as its receptor sensitizing effects. Now she lists one of my favorites. She doesn't talk that much about maca root in this book, but maca root, a plant found in Peru, um, Maca root is the most potent part of the plant. It enhances libido and is an aphrodisiac, um, but it is so much more than that. I want to add that it does balance the hormones in all of the different endocrine glands. And really, to me, it's like the yogic food because it definitely balances the hormones in the body. Hold on. I'm trying to pause this. I've got somebody right outside my door. Just a moment. wasn't even right outside my door. It was like down. It was so loud. Okay, excuse me. Okay, a few more here. We've got magnolia bark um, containing two compounds that decrease cortisol levels, induce bad anxiety, which hinder a male's sexual power and reaction. Magnolia bark is a traditional Chinese medicine used to treat menstrual cramps, headaches, migraines, anti-stress, aphrodisiac, antioxidant, antibiotic, digestive, and diuretic. It controls the body's primary stress hormone, cortisol. So magnolia bark is great. Increases levels of the calming neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Eases digestive disturbances caused by emotional distress and emotional turmoil. Magnolia bark also contains alkaloids that relax tense skeletal muscles without any change in motor activity or muscle tone. So this is really an important find here, this magnolia bark. You can find it um, usually at health food stores or online, add it to your smoothie. 
uh, Macuna perennis is a natural source of L-dopa. It's also found in a lot of um, male formulas usually. The chemical precursor of the neurotransmitter dopamine is in this herb, which in turn is a precursor of norepinephrine. L-DOPA stimulates the dopamine and norepinephrine systems of the brain, boosting libido. It appears that the higher levels of dopamine are associated with increased sexual interest. The natural L-DOPA in Macuna has been shown to convert into dopamine in the brain. Dopamine stimulates the hypothalamus and pituitary to release growth hormone. Dopamine also regulates motor control, sex drive, immune function, fat gain, loss, lean muscle gain, bone density, energy levels, and the ability to sleep soundly. <laughs> L-DOPA and dopamine are effective inhibitors of prolactin, which we just discussed. Increased levels of pituitary hormone prolactin is a hormone released by the pituitary gland considered responsible for 70 to 80 percent of erectile failure in males so when there's lots of prolactin then there's lots of erectile dysfunction so this herb macuna purine uh ends purines m-u-c-u-n-a macuna pru p-r-u-r-i-e-n-s through rains can help to lower that prolactin, okay? And then Mura Puma, also called potency wood, is a small Brazilian tree used as an aphrodisiac. These Brazilians really have found some good remedies, right? South America seems to know as sexual tonic for promoting virility, fertility, tree eating impotence, and increasing libido. Other benefits include protection of brain cells, really important in kundalini, reduction in fatigue, improve sleep, increase morning erections. Native people use the stems and roots from the young plant as a tonic to treat neuromuscular problems. A root decoction is used in baths and massages for treating paralysis and very berry. And a root bark tea is taken to treat sexual debility, rheumatism, cardiac and gastrointestinal weakness, nerve pain, menstrual disturbance, dysentery, depression, menstrual cramps, PMS, nerve pain, and central nervous system disorders. Really amazing plant. And then we have green oats, the Avena sativa, which is an oat, shown to stimulate the release of luteinizing hormone, uh, important for effectuating the secretion of certain sexual hormones like testosterone and aphrodisiac effects. And then we have Long Jack, the safest and most potent herbal aphrodisiac in the world, apparently, according to her. It is rare to get the genuine. So if you're looking for Long Jack, she says it's rare. So make sure you have a reputable source. Long Jack, otherwise known as Tongkat Ali, has become popular for its alleged testosterone enhancing properties, libido enhancer, and to treat various sexual dysfunctions. In Southeast Asia, it's used as a postpartum medication, as well as for anti-cancer, anti-malaria, anti-pyretic, anti-ulcer, uh, cytotoxic and aphrodisiac properties. It's anabolic, androgenic properties, improve muscle size and strength, and improve sport performance. And since the body's natural testosterone promotes protein synthesis and positive nitrogen balance, the benefits for training and workout and muscular cell growth um, and strength and re recuperation and recovery are unparalleled. And then we have red flower, Flos cathemus, activates blood circulation to general genitals, removing blood stasis and relieving pain. Then we have rhizoma curcuma longa, helping to eliminate blood stasis, promoting flow of energy to the genitals, relieving pain. And the last few, Rokong Rong, or Herba Sistonches, one of the most popular and potent tonic herbs to enhance sexual function, treating impotence and strengthening back and knees. And then the herb Suma, S-U-M-A, an adaptogen, general tonic, aphrodisiac, calming agent used to treat ulcers, employed as a cellular oxygenator, and taken to stimulate appetite and circulation, increase estrogen production, balance blood sugar levels, enhance immune system, strengthen muscular system, enhance memory, it supports hormonal balance, reduced inflammation, inhibits cancer and leukemia cells, enhanced immunity and raises libido. One reason for its many normalizing rejuvenating effects may be its ability to increase 
oxygenation and energy efficiency at the cellular level. So that's a really important statement and line, increase oxygenation and energy efficiency at the cellular level. That's SUMA, S-U-M-A. And then she ends this section with Yohembe, supposed to be one of the most effective herbs for erections. However, it's equivalent to 20 cups of coffee. So it will trash your nerves so easy. Your nerves so easy does it. Heart palpitations and excitation with insomnia for up to 30 hours can happen after ingesting just a small bit of Yohimbi. So it does not increase testosterone. Most contain none. Most supplements don't even contain Yohimbin. So be really careful looking for this herb. And then she lists other supplements to support sex hormones since that's the main hormones as part of your awakening, ashwagandha, Don Quai, Damiana, daughter seed, Fo Tea, which is the longevity herb, go to cola, licorice root, oak grass juice, passion flower, rhodiola, sarsaparilla, saw palmetto, royal jelly, wild yam, fish oil with omega 3s, increases um, nitric oxide, um, papaya increases arginine, DHEA, histidine, vitamin B6, niacin, zinc, selenium, magnesium, boron. So you can find all these on page 159. And then Hot Plants, she lists a couple of books, Nature's Proven Sex Boosters for Men and Women by Chris Kilham is a great resource. And The Magical and Ritual Use of Aphrodisiacs by Richard Allen Miller is also listed and Natural Sex Boosters by Dr. Ray Sahilingen. Those are all on page 159. We are gonna wait to go through the nitric oxide section and next time. This is really important. So I hope you'll join me again as we talk about the biology of Kundalini with Jana Dixon. Again, if you want support in your awakening process, if you're going through a Kundalini awakening or a white shock or a second awakening or a third awakening and you just need some support on your journey or some uh, guidance as to how to handle this energy, what comes next, what to do, what resources, that's what I'm here for, to support you through your awakening and to manage this life force energy, which is your natural birthright. Um, you can reach out to me by sending me an email, stasiabliss at gmail.com. You can find my videos here on this channel and I hope you'll join me next time. Thanks for being here. Much love and here's to your awakening.